Hey guys! Welcome to my little music room. <laughs> um, this is going to be hopefully a short-ish to the point video. I wanted to just show you some fingerings for scales. When I was younger, I was always very confused by scales, very befuddled by scales, always forgot the um, fingering. Especially when I had an audition and you have to do a thing, you know, you have to play your scale or just a random scale for an, um, an audition. So I'm going to show you. Hi, everybody. Um, I know the lighting's probably not very good. I was just practicing and thought this would be helpful. Okay, so just really quickly, if you're playing a two octave scale, you can play any two octave scale. All the way up the fingerboard if you stop if you start on your first finger so hi guys yay I'm so glad you could make it okay so watch this this is gonna be the fingering you can use for to play any two octave scale anywhere on the fingerboard you just have to start on your first finger so let's say you have to play the um, let's say you're on the violin and you're playing the A scale or the A flat scale it doesn't really matter it has to start on your first finger you're gonna plug in this extended third finger pattern Right, you see you have whole steps between one, two, three, and then you have a half step three to four. You start on first finger, plug in this hand pattern, go right over to the next string, plug in the same pattern. Then when you get to the next string over, it's the basic hand pattern, and then you're gonna stop also on the basic hand pattern on your top string. So it doesn't matter if you play the violin or the viola, this will work. That's So you're gonna use your fourth finger on the way up, or just use your fourth finger all the time. That way, you know, actually use your fourth finger all the time because we're going to be shifting up into a different position. So for example, on the viola, this is the D scale. So I can do that same pattern somewhere on the fingerboard, let's try in third position. <laughs> so, in third position, your open string and your first finger sounds like here comes the bride. So the same pattern, I'm gonna just plug in this extended third finger pattern. Hi! <laughs> and then the basic hand pattern on the top two strings, you end on your third finger, because that's the same note as you're starting. So this is a F, this is gonna be an F, I'm gonna stop there. So. Okay, so um, that's the fingering for a two octave scale, and you can do that anywhere. Hi, I'm <laughs> so glad you guys could join. You can do that anywhere on the fingerboard, so we could do the same thing here. I am not going to demonstrate that, though. <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about three octave scales. By the way, this is just for major scales. If you are gonna do a three octave scale, um, if you start on second finger anywhere, so two octave scale, start on first finger anywhere. If you're doing a three octave scale, start on your second finger and um, begin anywhere on your bottom string. So you start on your second finger anywhere on the bottom string. So let's say that we are Let's do like the E flat scale or something. So I'll just start here. And what I'm gonna do is plug in this extended third finger and extended fourth finger. So you've got your whole steps. Same thing. <laughs> bunch of whole steps. Yep, even flats. Doesn't matter if it's flat. You just start on your second finger. It's different if it's a minor key. If you're in a minor key, then it's different. So anyway, you're going to shift up on your, your first shift will be on your third string here. So let me try again. And you're always shifting from second finger to first finger on the way up. Your next shift will be on your top string. And one more. And you have a little extension at the top. So you have, what is that, three shifts? Second finger to first finger, that's the first one. Second finger to first finger. Another second finger to first finger. 
and you're always gonna have this little four, four at the top. So just remember on the way up, you, your first shift is on your third string. The next two shifts will be on your top string. And it's always first finger to second, sorry, it's always second finger going to first finger. So one more time. When you come back down, it's always gonna be first finger to third finger. Okay, oh, thank you. <laughs> I think about you guys every day. <laughs> you're right here, you're right here. So on the way down, you're gonna be shifting from your first finger to third finger. And you, you have that four, four, so you gotta do four, four on the way down every time. First finger to third finger. And you see how I find the third finger? You have to know where your first finger is and the notes in between to find that. You can't just find like this by using your ear. Get it every time by always knowing where you're going back down to with your first finger and then walking up the other fingers. So. And then you're gonna come back down again. You see how I find my first finger and walk it up? And that's it, then you're just back down. So the whole thing, second finger to first finger, second finger to first finger, one more, an extension. On the way down, it's first finger to third finger, and always know where your first finger is. sounded terrible. I'm like slouching over here to play so that you can see what I'm doing. But um, yeah, so you can do that same pattern anywhere on the fingerboard. So we could do it here. This is not going to sound good, <laughs> but let's take it here. This is starting on second finger again. I'm going to do the same pattern. <laughs> scale you can start anywhere on the C on your bottom string I almost said C string if you're viola it's the C string violin G string you start on your first finger anywhere the name of the scale let's say you're doing let's say you're on the violin and you're doing the C scale so you would start on your first finger on C which puts you in third position you're gonna black out this extended third finger hand pattern you're gonna use fourth finger on the way up and on the way down and then when you get to your top two strings you have the basic hand pattern you're gonna end on your third finger, and then you just come right back down. A tip for intonation when you come back down, instead of just trying to find fourth finger, try to um, bring these fingers over and block out your pattern, and then, because then you, you know, you've got this muscle memory that will help you. And anyway, you're gonna play them right after you play your fourth finger. Your, your fingers are built off of each other, so you're never finding your fingers like this unless you've been playing for like a hundred years and you know where everything is and you're fine. <laughs> but when you're first, um, I mean, I always do this and it actually really helps you when you do double stops too because your fingers know like how they relate to each other and where they go and everything. Um, so that's on the way, that's the two octave scale. When you're doing a three octave scale, you start on your second finger anywhere on the fingerboard. Doesn't matter whether you're doing a sharp or a flat or a natural or whatever. You can start on second finger and you just, you, I don't, <laughs> you might just kind of rely on your ear, but it's the same pattern. You're gonna have a bunch of whole steps. And then your first shift is second finger to first finger on the way up. And then another second finger to first finger, and then one more. So you have three shifts and you have a little extension. On the way down, you're going from your first finger to your third finger. And you just shift all the way down to first position or whatever position it puts you in on your top string. Cause you know, what if I started up here? Four, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. I'm not in first position here, but I did shift down one to three, one to three each time. So 
And then that just kind of puts you in your baseline position. So trying to think of, oh yeah, also with scales, I was also really always befuddled by intonation and everything. <clears throat> so, because, you know, we, I think most of us have a good sense of pitch, you know, um, but we don't really think about the intervals that we're playing. And so, for example, if you, um, let's say you sing, um, here comes the bride. If you play, if you sing, here comes the bride, <laughs> you can hear that, that one of those notes is wrong there. You can hear the second one is wrong. So scales are made up of whole steps and half steps and whole steps, if you have two of them in a row, it sounds like do, re, mi. So if you're playing, let's say you're playing like up here somewhere. Let's see. Let's see what note is that? The other thing is, is um, when you're starting on your two octaves or your three octave scale, and you start on your second finger, you should know where your first finger is against the open string. So right now I'm in. Um, fourth position here. It's just kind of a good, you need to know your baseline position. So, um, okay, so let's say we're doing a three octave scale. I start on my second finger and I'm not really used to this position. So I need to make sure that my fingers are good at, um, have a chance to feel the distances. So I'm going to use my ear to hear do, re, mi. So I have whole steps there. <laughs> string crossing. So things like that might really help you with scales. Always have your tuner nearby <laughs> so you can kind of keep track of what you're doing. Um, so yeah, this was just a quick little information for you. This is really helpful if you need to just like play a scale randomly for a um, audition or whatever for schools. <laughs> um, yeah, so just kind of having our brain really likes patterns. So Okay, I'm gonna go. I have to go back to practicing. I have all this beautiful stuff to learn for the Isle of Man. I'm very nervous to play on this master class. Um, it's been a long time since I've performed, you know, publicly. So I, I like <laughs> need to work on this. So I'm gonna go back to that. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye. Oh my goodness. My floor is really squeaky too, sorry.